Hi and welcome, Jamie Hartley here again from Crossfader and today we've got the brand new Roland DJ202 entry level controller from the partnership that is Roland and Serato. We got the 808 recently and now just released the 202 and the 505, we'll be reviewing that soon. But this video is all about diving deep into this entry level controller. The TRS drums are tucked away in this controller, they're underneath the pad modes. Um, they're a bit complex to use, but in this video I'm gonna break them down with a bit of a tutorial, as well as showcase all the other features, and just what you get for your money with this controller. Remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, do all that good stuff to help us keep making videos le like this. Let's take a closer look. Firstly, this controller comes with the Serato DJ intro software. There is the option to upgrade to the complete version of Serato DJ, unlocking various performance features, which we'll look at a little bit later. The Roland DJ202 has all the basic features you would expect to see on a controller of this size. If we just quickly load a track, we can use a browse pot up here and then load left and right with the buttons. We've got up faders, cross fader as standard, a three band total kill EQ, filter for each channel, high pass and low pass and a trim for extra volume control. Down the center of the mixer, we've got the master level, headphones level, headphones mix for introducing the master into the headphones for beat matching, and then the sampler level, which we'll look at a bit later. Moving on to one of the biggest standout things for this controller for me, and that is the jog wheels. They're really nice and quite heavy. They're really responsive as well when in vinyl mode for scratching. As soon as you touch the top, they're very touch sensitive. which is really nice. They've got a nice bit of weight to them. As you can see, if I spin it, it doesn't run away from me, allowing me to keep in control when nudging and trying to keep in time. Along the top, we have access to various effects built into Serato DJ intro. If you have a look on the screen, we can access a various number of effects, as you can see here. Then turn them on. We literally just select on the controller and then turn the level up and down. We can combine effects and even change the beat fraction by holding shift and then moving the level to change that beat mul beats multiplier. To the right of the effects, we have the tempo adjust. Now it is quite small, but it's as expected. Most intro controllers have a tempo adjust about this size as well. So it's just a matter of getting used to it and being able to match up the BPMs. If you're struggling to match up the BPMs, there is also the sync buttons, which synchronize two decks and also allow you to synchronize to the sequencer, which we're going to look at shortly. Moving on, there is a shift button to access a secondary layer of features underneath this controller. Anything that is labeled in a gray box, like here, the range, which allows us to change the tempo range from eight to 16 to 50%. There are also different options underneath certain features, like to be able to turn the sync off and select different effects. Now moving on to the performance pads. These are rubber pads, they've got a bit of a click to them. And we've got three different um, performance modes and then the sequencer mode, which I'll get onto shortly. The three different modes are hot cue, loop, and sampler. For hot cue, we can set up the four different hot cues throughout the track. We can delete using shift and then pressing that same pad. Underneath on the bottom layer, we have the manual loop settings, in, out, exit, and then we can activate the loop on and off. Better than that though, we have the auto loop options within this mode, one beat, two beats, four beats, and eight beats. Press again to deactivate. In the sampler mode, we can activate one shot samples. If you have a look on the screen, the sampler samples can be accessed here within the software. And it's a case of just dragging and dropping samples into that bank. This, however, leads us on to the most unique and exciting part of this product. Moving on to the sequencer mode, this is where it starts to get interesting. In the Roland DJ202 are built-in TRS drums. Now, they're under the hood, and it's quite complex to try and get your head around how they work. But I'm going to break down each different mode. There's a few different layers to this sequencer and pattern mode. So I'm going to break it down. We can actually access the TRS drums and also the Serato DJ sample bank to program into a sequence. To do this, press sequencer once, and then press it again so that the sequencer button is flashing green. Now, we can just check out the different TRS drums. If we hold shift, there are two different modes, parameter two and parameter one. The TRS drums are in parameter two. All of these eight pads now will play 
a different drum sound. These are the eight different TRS drums that we have access to in the Roland DJ202. To program them, we would go back onto Sequencer. And then we can start the sequence by pressing the Start Stop button here. And you'll notice the light travels across the eight different pads on each side, as long as you've got um, the Sequencer pad mode highlighted on both sides. Now, what these um, different layers equate to are the four different beats of a bar. We've got beat number one, beat number two, beat number three, beat number four. So to select one of the drums to program in, press Shift, and then choose which drum you want to highlight. So I'm going to choose the hi-hat, which is in pad number three here. When I let go, I can then program the hi-hat in by just tapping the pads. Now I could choose a different drum by pressing Shift. The first pad as the kick. And we're just going to create a simple 4x4 beat. Hold Shift, press the snare, layer the snare in. Now if I wanted to play some drums in live, I could press the sequencer button again so it's flashing. And you'll see the ones that I've programmed are actually flashing in time to the beat that I programmed. Now the ones that I haven't programmed, I could just play in live. If I decide I don't like one of them, I can hold shift and then just press any of the pads and it deletes that pattern for me to re-record in. If you then decide you want to add in some, of, some samples from within Serato DJ, we can hold shift, press parameter one, and then do exactly the same process, choosing the pad we want to add in and then sequencing it in using the pads. Once we've created a drum pattern, we can then sync that up to one of the playing decks. For example, if we've got a track playing, we can then set the sequencer off by syncing it up. And it will play along in time with the track. This will also emulate if we change the tempo of the track, it will still keep in time. If you decide to upgrade to the full version of Serata DJ, you now have the option to record your sets with the record option here. There are various extra effects that we can choose from. Anything on the controller that is outlined with a single line are extra features that are unlocked within Serata DJ complete version. So for example, if we press shift and now hot cue, it'll do a cue loop. So when we press the cue, it jumps and loops that um, from that cue point. If we press shift and the loop, it accesses the roll feature allowing us to roll loop certain parts of the track. There's also the option to access deck three and deck four in the complete version of Serato. However, I will say it's a bit fiddly to be able to mix in deck three and four because you basically have to bring the fader down of one of the channels and then back in to activate the channel that's layered underneath. So my thoughts on this controller, well, it sits really nicely into this entry level market of DJ controllers. It's got about 80-90% of the features that most of the other entry level controllers at this price bracket offer. It feels really nice, its build quality is pretty good, obviously it's a plastic shell, but it feels good, especially those jog wheels. I really enjoyed using these jog wheels, I've got to say they are probably the best jog wheels for the money at this entry level controller um, market. The TRS drums now, it is a bit complex as you saw and you can get a bit lost into what mode you're in, what setting you're in. They do work well, but don't expect to go and outperform yourself in a live performance with the TRS drums that are in here. If you're really adamant on using the live drums and sort of sampling in your sets, then I'd probably look at the 505, which we haven't reviewed yet, or the 808, where you've got a bit more functionality on the controller itself. Don't get me wrong though, it's a lot of fun to play with. So at home, in a bedroom setting, just to have some fun with, it's perfect. I really do think this controller is suitable for many DJs. If you want something just to take that's lightweight to small gigs and parties, it does the job really well. If you're a brand new DJ, um, thinking about buying your first piece of equipment, then yes, I would recommend this because it comes with the Serato DJ intro software. And the good thing about that is, it strips back all of the complicated things about DJ softwares and just gives you the basic stuff that you need to perform and learn to DJ with. Saying that, you've still got the extra features in here to play around with, even with the intro software. And then if you decide you want to upgrade, please bear in mind, it is 
an extra um, cost to upgrade to the full version of Serato DJ, but then you can access the extra features and they're right here on the controller as well, like the slicer and roll and Q loop, slip mode. So you do have the option to upgrade and expand your setup slightly. I hope this video has helped you maybe decide if you're thinking about purchasing this product or if you just wanted to find out a bit more about it. I've had a lot of fun. We'll be doing a performance video as usual with this controller, so look out for that. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, do all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video.